Hey everybody, I'm Chili. Welcome back to Intermediate C++ Tutorial 13. Today we're going to be talking about text rendering. You know, text rendering is obviously a super important skill. You know, you want to weave those deeply engaging, life-affirming narrative tapestries. You're going to have to write some words on the screen. So that's what we're going to be learning how to do. Now there's good news. And the good news is we basically already got all the skills we need to write this shit on the screen because drawn text is basically just drawn sprites. The only difference is instead of having a bitmap with a bunch of frames of animation arrayed on a regular grid, you're going to have a bitmap with a bunch of glyphs arrayed on a regular grid. And to draw text, all you need to do is draw, you know, sprites from this grid onto the screen in a row, uh, according to some string, and there you go, you've got motherfucking text. Now you might be asking Chili, well how did you get this, uh, this sprite sheet, we'll call it a font sheet. And I just made it myself. I used um, motherfucking Photoshop. You can use GIMP or whatever. Just use the text tool and you just write out a bunch of text. Now there's one important thing that you got to do. And that is you've got to select a font that is fixed width. And that's important because you want to have you want to have a regular grid of characters and you want to be able to calculate the position on the screen with regularity and if you have a proportional font then different characters are going to be different widths and it's going to fuck up your alignment it's going to be a very bad deal so make it easy on yourself use a fixed width font now one more important point to get right is the order of the characters in your sprite sheet matters and uh, if you look at an ASCII table here, you're going to see it starts with space and it's exclamation mark, all this stuff going down, one, two, three, four, five. And if you look here, we got our space, exclamation mark, bunch of shit, numbers, all in that order. Same for this row, same for this row. So all the main characters that you're interested in uh, displaying, all the symbols and all the letters, uh, we got them here on our sheet in the same order that they appear in the ASCII code. And that is very useful because we're going to want to be able to map from ASCII code values on to rectangles on our sprite sheet. And if they line up, that makes our life a hell of a lot easier. Now let's take a look at how I got this all done. Uh, for the project, what I did, you know, I added the font sheet, obviously, and I added a new font file, font.h, font.cpp. So the font class is going to represent a font. It's basically just a wrapper around a surface, and it also contains some information. The, uh, the dimensions of a glyph, uh, the number of rows and columns, that's going to be the same for every font sheet. And a chroma color, that is the, you know, the, the font sheet's chroma color for transparency. And the first character and the last character that are going to appear on the uh, font sheet. So the first one's going to be space. The last one is going to be the tilde, because the delete character obviously doesn't, you can't really display that. We're going to keep it simple. Three functions. Constructor, that basically loads the, uh, the surface the draw text function which takes a string and a position and the graphics and it will draw that string to the screen and then the little helper function private map glyph rect which will map a uh, an ascii character code to a rectangle on our sprite sheet all right now let's take a look at the implementations uh, the constructor is very simple we load the surface we set the glyph glyph width and height to be the width and height of the surface divided by the number of columns and the number of rows. Uh, and then we set the chroma and that's it. And in here we just do a couple of assertions to make sure that the bitmap actually had valid dimensions. It was a proper, you know, multiple of the number of rows and number of columns. And uh, once you do that, there you go, you've got it all set up. It's pretty simple. Next, let's look at the uh, the map glyph rect function. So the first thing this does is it makes sure that the character in is an actual displayable character. So it just does an assertion to check to see if it's within the proper range. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get the glyph index, which is the, the index from the first character, the first displayable character. So we just subtract the value of the first displayable character, which is space, from the character value. So that means that if, if the character is a space, the index is going to be zero. If it's an at sign, it's going to be, I believe, 32, etc., etc. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to get the grid coordinates of our character, our ASCII code, in the font sheet. So, I mean, just to give you an example, you know, the H would be coordinates, uh, I don't know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
and y would be 1, 8, 1, exclamation mark would be uh, 1, 0, etc. And we should do that by dividing by the number of columns gives us the y coordinate, and doing the modulus of the number of columns gives us the x coordinate. So for example, if we wanted to uh, find the gr grid coordinates of B, B would be, its, uh, its index value would be 34. 34 divided by 32 is 1, and 34 mod 32 is 2. So B would be 2, 1. Once we got the grid coordinates, then we want to convert that into pixel coordinates on the sheet. So we're going to use the recti constructor that takes a point and takes a width and a height. And uh, to calculate the point, so say your character is B, right? Your Y coordinate is going to be 1, your X coordinate is going to be 2. So to find the top left, that is going to be the width of your character times the X coordinate 2. So times 0, times 1, times 2, here is your x, your y is going to be the height times 1, so here is the top left hand corner, and then the width and the height is just the width and the height of a glyph. And there you go, you've got the rectangle of the shit that you want to draw. And then finally we've got the draw text function, it takes in a string, it takes in the position to draw from, it takes in graphics, it's const function, it's not going to change anything about the font sheet. So what you do is we're going to make a copy of the, uh, the position, and the reason for that is because we're actually, like when we're drawing on the screen, you know, after we copy a character to a place, we're going to increment the position to draw to, and then we're going to copy another character, and, you know, so on and so forth. So we need to be able to change this fucker, and all we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, range-based for loop, looping through all the characters in text. Uh, we make sure that the ASCII code is within the drawable range, so we make sure it's within the range of first car plus one and it is and last car. And the reason why I do the plus one is because if the character is a space character, obviously we don't want to just do a sprite copy of a blank space, so we can just skip that character. So we check to see if it's a visible character. If so, we call draw sprite with you know the, the current position x and y the uh, the rectangle that we mapped with the previous function here, the surface that is the sprite sheet and the chroma key of that sprite sheet. We draw that fucker on the screen and then we increment the position, the x position of our drawing position on the screen by the width of a single glyph. Repeat that for all the characters in the string and there you go, you've got your string all drawn onto the screen. Now in order to test this, I added a font to game.h and down here I just draw that font to the uh, the mouse position on the screen. And if I run that, what you're going to get is you're going to get some text drawn on screen. You'll be saying, Chili, I don't see the goddamn text. You're lying to me. Well, it's actually it's being drawn. If you can see here, here's the text. The problem is is that our font, you know, the characters here are black, and uh, that doesn't work too good on a black background. So what we could do is we could create a different font sheet, or we could just uh, invert the colors on this font sheet so the background was black and the characters were white. And that's great, but it's, it would be annoying if we had to create a different font sheet for every single color that we want. I got a better idea. We do our sprite drawing as usual. We check the pixel to see if it's a chroma pixel, if so we skip it. But if it's a non-chroma pixel, instead of just copying that value, what we're going to do is we're going to replace it with a value that's passed in. So every time we hit a black pixel, instead of drawing black onto the surface, we're going to draw red or yellow or whatever the user passes in. So you can see here in graphics.h, I've added a uh, another set of sprite drawing functions and they work basically the same except they take an additional parameter and that is the substitute color to substitute uh, when we have a non-transparent pixel. And the way that works is it's basically exactly the same as the other sprite drawing functions except that in here, uh, instead of drawing with the source pixel color, we are now drawing with the substitute color if it is not a chroma pixel. And then in font.h, we, uh, we change the draw text function so that it takes a color. And in font.cpp, we are going to be, let's see if I can find it here, we're going to be calling draw sprite substitute instead of just draw sprite. 
And you can see here in game.cpp now we're adding colors white into this call. And if we run this, now you've got your beautiful text and you can actually read the motherfucker. Now, what if you wanted to draw multiple lines? You could do multiple calls to draw text and line it up, but um, what I wanted to add to this is support for uh, rendering the new line character. So, if we go into font.cpp, draw text, what I've done is I've added an extra test here, uh, test for a new line character. Before we test to see if it's in the range of visible characters, we test if it's a new line character. If it is a new line character, all we do is we return it back to the original exposition. So we return it back to the pause, and then we add glyph height to the Y of current pause. And then we continue, which skips this stuff and just uh, goes to the next character. Then in game.cpp, I change the text to this, and if we run it, we should get two lines of text being drawn. Let me smash. And indeed, we do get a couple of lines of text here. Now, the next thing I did is just a minor change, because in game.cpp, I was a little annoyed that I have to call Windows Mouse got get position X, get position Y, and then create a vector out of that. So what I did you know, is actually in mouse, there is a function in here called um, get position that gets a pair, uh, which is a pair of ints. And instead of getting a pair, I decided to make it return a v2. And so in mouse here, I just make it uh, return v2 instead of returning a pair. And that means that in here, now instead of doing all that bullshit, all we need to do is call Windows mouse get pause and stuff is done. It's a little bit of a cosmetic change there. Now that substitution effect, that works really nice for our text. We can now draw text of any color we want from a single font sheet, but that's not all we can do. Check this out. So I've added a little, uh, a little thing to our character where uh, we can actually do a little damage effect. It looks like he's taking damage. I'm also playing a little sound effect here. I don't know if you can hear it but uh, we just draw the sprite with the substitution effect for a, uh, for a split second, and that gives us a nice little taking damage effect. And the way I do that is pretty simple. Uh, in animation.h, I draw a second, uh, I add a second version, which is draw color, and that will draw the, uh, the sprite animation, but replaces all the colors, or all the pixels, with a single color and that's just calling draw sprite substitute. Now in character, it's a little more complicated. I've added some data here that keeps track of how long the effect will last and whether the effect is currently active. And then I've got a function in here, activate effect. Now in character.cpp here, I mean, obviously we've got the activate effect uh, function and that just sets the effect active to true and resets the effect time to zero. Now. In the update, we're not only going to be updating the position in the animation, we're also going to be updating the effect time. So if the effect is active, we add some time to it, and if it, it reaches the duration time, we deactivate the effect. So there's where the effect is stopped, it happens in update. And then in draw, we just check to see if effect is active. If it is, we draw with the color red, I believe it's in here, yeah, red. Otherwise, we just draw the normal animation sequence. So in game.h, what I do, well, first I add a uh, sound effect, hit that wave, and in here I check to see, uh, basically I check for keyboard events, and if there is a key press event with the space key code, I call activate event, I activate effect on link, and I play the sound effect. And there you go, that substitution effect that we thought we just created for uh, font drawing, actually gives us a nice special effect you can use in a bunch of different situations. Like uh, when your character or when enemies take damage, it's nice to have a, a visual indicator that you're actually doing damage to, like, say, an enemy. You can make it flash red or white to show that. And that's basically it for this tutorial. Uh, last commit I made, I just basically cleaned up all of the media. I got it out of the source code, and I created some folders for images and for sounds here. Now, one thing I want you to realize here is that sprite drawing and drawing in general doesn't have to be just, you know, copying the pixels from one surface to the other. You can also do a whole bunch of sick-ass effects, like the damage effect. And for the homework, what I'm going to get you guys to do is uh, try to figure how to do this uh, sick-ass ghost effect here that I've got. 
So make it so that the uh, the sprite is sort of semi-transparent, translucent sprite. And I'll leave it up to you as to how to implement that. Uh, use your imagination, use your brain, and hopefully you can figure this one out. But if you can't, I will be at you with the answer in due course. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. Your support means a lot. And uh, I will see you soon with some more C++.